you know, we adjust to, well, they're, they're quick, they're athletic um, in their two high major opponent games, NC State and Mississippi State. Uh, they gave them fits. So, you know, to win by 27 was great. Daniel was terrific. I mean, you know, we, we, we don't know officially when the last time somebody's had a 2020 performance here, but uh, we know it's uh, since the 1960s. So uh, that's terrific. Um, I thought that, you know, Gabe obviously continued his hot shooting. Uh, Marcus was, was really, really good. Um, the free throw shooting was phenomenal. I mean, 29 to 30. We, we've really, really talked about getting to the foul line more, getting more points at the foul line. And obviously to go 29 for 30 was great. So um, FIU is a good team. And, uh, you know, I thought we did a really, really good job uh, to wrap up, you know, the non-conference. And we're playing good basketball. And obviously I'm excited about, you know, the opportunity versus Purdue next week. Coming off the break, there was the lack of energy just to start. But once FIU pushed you guys, it seemed like Gabe, um, once Gabe and Daniel kind of got it going, then you guys went from there. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, they've got high major speed. Um, they've got really good length, and they were a little bit quicker to some offensive rebounds. Uh, they had five after the first media, and then obviously we held them to four the rest of the game. So did a good job adjusting there. Uh, you know, four days off. We had a hard practice Thursday, went a little bit lighter Friday. Um, you know, but it's also a 40-minute game, and I thought uh, for 40 minutes we played pretty hard. Richard, what can you say just about the consistency and the efficiency that, that Daniel's had now through 12 games? Yeah, I don't know the exact percentage, but it's it's terrific. I mean, it's we're, you're looking at eight for twelve, like it's no big deal. You know, he's not missing a lot of shots. Uh, rebounded the ball great today. I think we, we saw they blocked so, so many shots that you can get some offensive rebounds, and you know saw that on the film. Uh, he's playing great basketball. He's playing he's playing very very efficiently. And what's exciting is he can still get better at a lot of things. Um, you know, and obviously coming up, I mean, you're gonna go against a great big kid in arms, and you know. Uh, produced tough and physical, so it'd be a good test. Um, how much is it that he can stay on the floor? You know, even I think earlier in non-conference play, he played him with a couple fouls in the first half. He's just learned how to play physical and still be on the floor. Yeah, I mean, obviously with Eric going down, I mean that's one one option um, less. So you know, as much as we can get him to play major minutes without fouling, we need. I mean, he, he's one of the better players in the Big Ten, um, in my opinion, and, and so. We're obviously a much, much better team when he's on the court. He changes a lot of things offensively and defensively. 29 for 30 free throw shooting is unbelievable, obviously. Were you doing anything different in these practices? Were you giving him Christmas treats or anything? No, you know, coaches get way too much criticism for free throw shooting. Um, and that's, I'm okay with criticism, but the criticizing of free throw shooting is, is, is the top of the list of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Um, we all practice them, you know, I, I know it's surprising. <laughs> Um, I do think free throw shooting costs us some games early. I really do. And I, I mean, I don't know if we're a 29 for 30 type team, but you know, we have the same routine every practice for the last eight years. I've been a head coach. And um, you know, I, we're clearly better than what we had shown early. And, and I thought it zapped us a little bit. So it was, it was good. I, I don't worry about the percentage as much as the amount of points we can get from it. And we were not getting enough points early in the year from it. Now, obviously, 29 points is terrific. You can tell that with Gabe even as well, um, when he's not maybe shooting the long ball, he'll take it to the basket. Yeah, I think the last three, you know, and again, when you play the third toughest schedule in the country, um, you're going to learn from a lot. And I think he's starting to understand that, like, okay, yeah, like, he needs some more two-point baskets. He had six, I think, um, you know, versus threes. And obviously, three-point line, he's terrific. Um, but you can't be one-dimensional in this game because teams are going to scout. They're going to try to take things away. And um, over the last couple of games, he's certainly done that.